Hello and welcome to an NDTV special with one of the most distinguished literary doctors of our time, Abraham Verges, novelist and writer of non-fiction books like In My Own Country, The Tennis Partner, and of course his remarkable novel, Cutting for Stone. He's joining me at the Jaipur Literature Festival. How often do you come to India? Is this your first trip, for example, in Rajasthan and at the Jaipur Lit Fest? I don't come often enough. I wish I were here more. But I was here last year. I was here uh, researching this new novel that I'm planning to write, which is very much set in Kerala, set in the estates, uh, set in the 40s and 50s, that interesting period of transition from British rule. Uh, so I've, I come here, I think, almost every year. Right. I wish I could come more often. The interesting thing is that of all your books, there's hardly a reference to India. The first two are entirely set in America. And Cutting for Stone, your first novel, remarkable piece of fiction, only really has a fleeting reference to India in the beginning when, when the nurse leaves the shores of Madras. It's yeah. India's really a point of departure. True. So why are you returning to India in your new book? And why are you going back to really what would be a period of your parents growing up in Kerala? You know, I think uh, one of the things that happens every time I come to India is I have the strong sense that the pulse that's beating within me is very much an Indian pulse. I mean, I just sort of immediately seem to resonate with the rhythms and the foods and, the, you know, a sense of, wow, this is really where the gene pool begins for me. And I think that even though Cutting for Stone didn't really have a lot of Indian geography, the characters were very much, I suppose, the way I am, uh, Indians abroad, Indians carrying the culture with them, the values, even though in a different geography, the, the values take on a very different color. Uh, so it's, um, it's ambitious for me to write about Kerala, but I do feel like I know it fairly well. I came on vacation every year with my parents or every other year. I spent a good deal of my vacations there. Even as a medical student in Madras, I would go down there. And I think it's a culture that hasn't really been explored that much in a literary sense. Uh, we have the God of Small Things and a number of wonderful other writers, but lots of room for another novel set there. And why the 40s and 50s? I don't know. I think it's, um, I find it to be a charming era, even though it's really the era before my birth. Uh, but there's something about that period that uh, to me has always been quite romantic, quite interesting. The, the world on the cusp of something new, which as it turned out, it was. Right. You speak very often of the destiny of geography. Yes. Uh, and the curious part about uh, 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 the de your destiny in geography really begins with your parents' extraordinary story. Yeah. Uh, both school teachers in Kerala. Yeah. And one day, uh, the late, great, controversial Ethiopian Emperor Haile Selassie visiting uh, the ancient churches of Kerala um, spots these school children on the street and decides at that moment, in the early 50s, that uh, really he's got to recruit uh, doctors, school teachers for his capital, Addis Ababa. And that's how your parents arrived in Ethiopia, where you were born and raised, weren't you? Uh, that's, that's, you know, it's really striking to me how, how much, you know, coincidence and happenstance plays in the evolution of a destiny. But by changing their geography, my parents changed their destiny completely. And by virtue of the fact that I was born not in, not in Kerala, but in Ethiopia, my destiny was completely different. And when I myself was forced to leave Ethiopia because of the conflict there, that brought about a change in destiny. And I think in my, in my novel especially, I think I spent a lot of time on geography, on the sense of geography as a character, uh, and a sense that when that geography shifted, there would be a major change in the character's destiny. And I actually tried to bring that to bear in the novel. Right. It is a story of constant dislocation. It is indeed. Uh, and looking for roots. Yes. Uh, considering that Cutting for Stone uh, is set in three continents. Yeah. And several decades. It is a chronicle, a saga. Uh, but really, the most challenging and exciting and, and memorable parts of it uh, are, are really Ethiopia, uh, uh, this absolutely verdant, beautiful land, yeah. this proud, formal, dignified people, yeah. and yet the seething violence 
underneath, yeah. which which forced you to leave as yeah. well as a medical student. Yeah. You describe it as a heartbreaking moment. How much of it was your own history, your parents' history, the hospital, your medical schooling in Addis Ababa, yeah. the political convulsions, the coups? It's interesting. I mean, I've answered that question differently as time has gone on because I spent a lot of time initially when the book came out denying that this was autobiographical. You know, I'm not a twin, my mom, mother was not a nun as far as I know, my parents are not physicians. Uh, and yet, I clearly was capturing the social and political movements of my time, the things that made a great impression on me. I was a medical student in Ethiopia. I had to leave around the same time the character does. So, I clearly was falling back on things I know. But I thought I was making up a lot of stuff. But the, the more time I've spent thinking about the book, the longer it's been out there, uh, the more I recognize that there are things in there that are really the subconscious themes of my life. I guess that's how all novels are. But I had this illusion that this was completely fictional based on a substrate of facts. Um, but you know, in seeing a therapist, which is something I'm happy to confess doing, I think we should all be seeing therapists. One of the fascinating things is to have my therapist read my novel. And as he's reading my novel, he's pointing out to me things in there. Like? Late motifs. As? Motifs of, you know, some things are obvious, like motives of displacement, motives of, you know, of abandonment. But some things are not obvious. For example, there was a, a toy plane that a little boy carries during an airplane flight, and then due to some turbulence, he falls, he breaks his leg. My older brother pointed out to me that we made a similar flight, and I was carrying a small plane. It's beyond my memory. I don't remember that. And yet there were things like that that manifested in the novel that clearly came from my subconscious. So uh, the curious thing is that I'm now rereading the novel for the first time after two years, you know, not, not really rereading it, but sampling it with a view to trying to see what else crept in there that might have uh, you know, psychological or other import in my life. So right, it is autobiographical. India's number one news app just got even better. Download NDTV's new app Fully optimized for retina display. Full screen view. Faster response time. And Sudoku. NDTV's new iPad app. Download now.